Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of VS for Build. In today's episode, it's time to take a little break from the standard build and give the FJ shop truck a little bit of love. In today's episode, we're gonna be doing a full tune-up and we're gonna be doing mods. Stay tuned. Today's episode is proudly sponsored by STP 5-in-1 Ultra Fuel System Cleaner, and we're gonna be using that and talking about that a little bit later in the episode. So to get started on the uh, tune-up, first thing you always wanna go ahead and do is change the oil. It's been about 10,000 miles on this car since we've changed the oil. We've driven it to Vegas and back. So let's get started. We're gonna jump underneath, pull that drain plug, and drain the old oil out. After you get your drain plug out, you're gonna realize that your drain plug crush washer, in this case drain plug gasket, is pretty much toast. On the FJ, they use a one-time use, non-reusable drain plug gasket, so make sure that you pick another one of these up at the auto parts store to be ready to roll before you get started on this project. Now that we have our drain plug pulled, we're gonna to wanna to take our old oil filter off. That's located right here to the front right of the engine, and you're just gonna to to unscrew this counterclockwise and it'll come right off. If your oil filter is completely stubborn and stuck on there like mine is, you got a couple options. You could go get an oil filter wrench and that'll help you take it off. Or you could do the DIY at home thing I do not recommend that I'm about to do, which is take a screwdriver and tap it with a hammer through the oil filter horizontally so the head of the screwdriver runs through the oil filter. Then you can grab the handle and turn it counterclockwise to unscrew the oil filter. Voila, oil filter shish kebab. Like I said, I don't recommend doing this at home, but if you got no other choice, it is a thing that works. And this is a reminder to not tighten it as hard the next go round. Now's a good time to grab your new oil filter and get a little bit of fresh oil on your finger or something like that and run it just along the top of the rubber gasket right here. And that's gonna help prevent the rubber from binding up when you go ahead and screw this back in. All right, with the new oil filter in, it's time to install the drain plug in the bottom, put the new oil in the top, check it on the dipstick. When we get the right level, we're good to go on the oil change. While I'm doing that, Chelsea's gonna be vacuuming out the interior. All right, that's a wrap on the oil change. Next thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is change out the intake air filter and the spark plug. So underneath the air filter over here, you have the passenger side bank of spark plugs. And then over here, you can kind of see where you get access to all those spark plugs. So it's not gonna be real fun pulling the plug coils off and getting the plugs out of there, but it's gonna be worth it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by removing the air filter housing, pull that aside, and then we'll start pulling all the uh, plug coils. After I'm doing a couple clips, you can pop this whole air filter thing backwards and you can inspect your air filter. This one actually wasn't in too bad of shape, but we got a brand new one anyways. So that goes out, this will go in. Now, once we had that out, it made room to access the uh, spark plug coils and uh, they look good. And so what we did was we just unbolted each one of these and popped them out, labeled them. So I know this is two, that one's three. I did one, two, three, I don't know. It's my own labeling system. So uh, next thing you gotta do is get your spark plug socket, go down in there, deep dive down into there, pull all the old spark plugs out, throw the new ones in, put the coils back right on top, and then you're done over here. And then we'll just go ahead and put our new air filter in and plug that in, we'll be done with the whole passenger side. Okay, that's the passenger side bank of spark plugs and the air filter replaced. I started to get really worried when I was popping some of the spark plugs out because it almost felt like they were cross-threaded in there and I was just, I was dreading the idea of that. But it turns out that they were just the dirtiest threads I've ever seen on a spark plug ever. This makes me think that it's possible that these spark plugs had never been changed in this car. This car's at 150,000 miles at this point. And I, th I think it's possible but that they'd never ever been changed, which is crazy. So now that was supposed to be the easy side. We're moving on now to the hard side, which is right here. Man, 
man, that was a total pain, but I finally got the driver's side bank of spark plugs done. So now we have all new spark plugs in the system. So I started this tune-up because the car was taking a couple extra cranks on startup to get started up. And with any combustion engine, you have combustion because of air, fuel, and spark. So we've replaced our air filter to get nice clean air. We've replaced all of our spark plugs to get nice clean spark. And now I want to help to clean the fuel system. And that brings us to our sponsor for today, STP's Ultra 5-in-1 Fuel System Cleaner. This one's going to be a lot easier to install. <laughs> STP Ultra 5-in-1 Fuel System Cleaner has three times the amount of cleaning agents versus the leading premium gasoline. To deep clean your entire fuel system, help eliminate deposits, inhibit corrosion, reduce friction, and restore peak performance. You can use it every oil change or every 4,000 miles. And just like that, guys, we've helped improve our fuel system. It was a lot easier than doing that other stuff. STP is a great company, guys. We have history with STP. I've been personally using them for many, many years, and we've done campaigns with them back on the channel before. Our 7 Series limo car, pretty much the only reason it lived through what it went through was because of STP's products. I saw dramatic improvements by using their products. So I 100% stand by them. I'm happy to have them on the channel, and this was a really cool thing to use and a really big help to the car. So thanks, STP, for sponsoring this episode. Now, Chelsea and I need to get some lunch. Chelsea has never had Korean barbecue before, so I figured we should take her here. If you're a vegetarian, uh, you might want to skip the next few shots. I'm so full. So full. Well, barbecue is fantastic as always, but we still got a lot of work to do, and we got to get to it if we're going to get done before the sun goes down. All right, I've got an idea of how to pick up the pace a bit. So my next project, is to clean up and repaint this thing. So when you see all the scraping and scratching and stuff off of here, rock chips hit these things pretty hard, but that's not really what this is. This means that you didn't sand well enough into the surface below so that the new paint could grab on well enough. So I need to go ahead and re-sand this and repaint this whole grill. It's pretty quick and easy to pop it out. We'll pop it out, tape it off, re-sand and repaint. While I'm doing that, Chelsea and I are gonna race. She's gonna clean the outside of the truck, just a standard like wash and, wash and clean. And we'll see who gets done first. Chelsea totally beat me on this one. It took way longer than I thought to sand this thing up, but I gave it a good sanding, three coats of satin black, and that'll get reinstalled in a second, uh, but I need to give it more time to dry. While we're giving it time to dry, let's move on to the last thing that we're gonna do, which is we're gonna build a roof rack rack. This was basically uh, supposed to be a metal box that was gonna sit inside the roof rack to stack lumber for when we go camping. So this is our adventure vehicle, this is our camping rig, and in the back there, you guys know that we have this uh, bedding thing set up. It's in the playlist for this build if you wanna see how we did it. It's a really cool thing that uh, folds flat with the seats and sets up and it makes us a nice flat sleeping surface. All, all those things, all those pieces of wood and stuff that we use to do that have this nice fabric covering on them and stuff like that. And when we put firewood in the back on top of those things, it kind of leaves behind little splinters and stuff like that. It's not very comfortable. So I was thinking it'd be really cool to figure out a way that we could just load up firewood on the roof. So I thought about building a basket. But before I get too far, I think Toyota might have solved this one for us already. So I gotta go check something. All right, rather than building a box and setting it inside the roof rack, I found these things, which are like some lateral supports that are original part of the roof rack. We took them off because we were trying to eliminate wind noise and I uh, found out that these aren't really the culprit at all. It was the LED light bars and that's why we don't have them anymore. So anyways, these things I found out with some minor modifications, we can go ahead and mount them right about here, one on the bottom and one on the top, and then we can stack all our wood in there like that one test piece is in there now, all the way across, and with a cargo net, it should be nice and 
safe and secure in there. Then what we can also do is if we want, we can loosen them up, slide them forward, and we should be able to set four wheels on the roof, which is gonna be really good for when we start going drifting more. So that's what I wanna go ahead and test. We're gonna modify these things, clean them up, paint them up, mount them in there, and I'm gonna see if I can also try and get four wheels and tires on the roof. They fit really well. So we can't just zip off to the track quite like this yet. What we need is one of those straps that goes up, it splits off into two and then trails down the set of tires down and then we'll come together and go back down. I've seen them online, I'll be able to pick one up and they'll ratchet down. That way the tires have no way of getting out. But right now they are really, really sturdy and very, very in there. But obviously tires weigh a lot and if one of those came off on the highway, it could be potentially fatal. So you gotta have all the pro like proper protective uh, things done. You know what I mean? Safety. That's what I'm talking about. But I'm stoked. It's definitely a good, a good solution. And then all we do is we loosen up these things right here, slide them back to over here, and then we'll go ahead and stack all of our wood in there horizontally. And then we already have cargo nets to handle that type of stuff. Cargo net all the way around. And we're off to go camping. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's not gonna be fun to take all those down, but the last thing that we gotta do, let's install our front grill. Just before nightfall, sun setting, and we just finished up the grill. Looks really, really good. Looks a lot better with that nice fresh coat of paint on it. All right, and with that, that is a wrap on today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Huge thanks to STP Ultra 5-in-1 Fuel System Cleaner for sponsoring this episode. Guys, pick some up today. Help improve the fuel system on your vehicle and help you keep your car running better for longer. If you head over to stp.com or check the link in the description, it'll shoot you over to the product page. There's a little button that says where to buy. Click that button. It'll show you where you can get some near you. I hope you all enjoyed a little bit of a break from the usual build. I really needed to give a little bit of love to the FJ and then Chelsea's M5 is up next. So look forward to that. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks again for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Peace! Come on.